this lesson, I'm going to start the NCLOF simulation test for his clothing. I'm going to get started with the test for his ripped jeans. The sculpt work for the jeans is done. So this test will be more conclusive than the other two tests I'm going to perform for his baggy hoodie and his cropped hoodie. For this simulation test, I decided to try out Advanced Skeleton by Animation Studios. It's a very powerful rigging tool. I'm so impressed with its features that I've decided to use it for the rigging portion of this course. I've done quite a bit of research to draft a workflow that will allow me to use Advanced Skeleton independently of the XGen Groom and the NCLOS system that these characters are going to have. So I'm happy to share the workflow in the upcoming lessons when I get started rigging these characters. So for this simple test, I went with a very simple fit skeleton, no face rig, no picker user interface. And I also rigged the ears so that I can test how they work with the hoodies in the next two lessons. Advanced Skeleton has a ton of ways to get some test motion. I decided to use some of the motion from their motion capture library in these tests. When it comes to the skinning, I tried not to do a haphazard skinning job because from the previous test that I performed in the last lesson and a few other lessons before that, I've come to understand how NCLOTH will misbehave if the underlying deformations of the mesh it is colliding with are bad. So I've used advanced skeleton slider joints to get some better volume preservation on the skinning. I won't be covering any further details about the advanced skeleton rigging process in this lesson, but I do want to mention that before we get to the rigging of these two anthro characters, I will be putting out a course called Migrating Kiwa to Advanced Skeleton. In this course, I will go through the advanced skeleton rigging process using this Dance Fox model that I created back in 2023. The model already has a rig, and you've probably already seen some of her rigging features on my page. In the Migrating Kiwa to Advanced Skeleton course, I will replace all the custom rigging I've done with a much more stable Advanced Skeleton rig. I'm working on it right now, and the first couple of lessons should be out in a few weeks. When that rig is done, it will be available to the members of my fourth patron tier. So if you want access to this rig when it's done, you can sign up for my fourth patron tier. The rig will come with a face and body selector courtesy of Advanced Skeleton. Okay, let's get back to these test results. I created some quick proxy geometry in ZBrush. For all the proxy geometries created for this test, I work to ensure that the proxy mesh is flush with the underlying side of the clothing assets. Those of you who have watched my NCLOTH course about simulating sculpted clothing probably remember that I usually extrude the proxy mesh to be halfway in between the thickness of the final geometry. This is the proper way to do things. And this is how I will be creating the proxy meshes for the final setup. But for this test, I went with a quick resolution that allows me to take the underlying layer of geometry and use it as my proxy mesh. It will still work, but will be slightly less accurate with collisions and self-collisions. The difference will be negligible unless you really zoom in. For this jeans proxy mesh, I'm not too concerned about separating it into panels for now. For the final setup, I will be separating the pockets and the belt loops and whatever other panels need to be isolated to get a more accurate solution. Even when it comes to the ripped openings in the knee, I will reserve all the granular separating of the hanging fabric for the final setup. So for this test, I only have one proxy mesh to control the entire jeans and all its elements. What I am more concerned about and the reason for this simple approach for this test is because I'm more concerned about the settings I need to have to create believable creases in the crotch area. It's the hardest part of the simulation to get right. At a glance, I didn't think this low proxy mesh that I settled on had enough resolution to give me good end cloth creases in the crotch area, but I did trust it to work for the rest of the pants. So I modified my proxy mesh to get a few other proxy meshes one that is subdivided one level and another that is subdivided one level just in the crotch area. So that gives me three proxies to work with. I ran a few isolated simulation tests to see which one of these three proxy mesh options would work the best. I eventually settled on getting started with the one that has more subdivisions in the crotch area. 
I'm going to give a quick breakdown of the workflow I'm using. I start by baking my mocap animation from Advanced Skeleton onto the rig. Then I export the animation as an Alembic, import the animation into a file called the cloth room. The cloth room contains the proxy and the final geometry for the ripped jeans. The proxy geometry has the end cloth settings. The imported Alembic animation acts as a passive collider. The final ripped jeans geometry initially remains disconnected from the proxy jeans geometry until I fine tune the end cloth settings on the proxy. When the proxy is simulating the way I want, I crank up the solver settings to fairly high numbers and cache the end cloth animation to disk. Once the end cloth animation is cached and I can scrub the timeline to review the results of my simulation, it's time to subdivide the proxy geometry twice. I do this by first smoothing with a three key and then converting smooth mesh preview to polygons from the modify menu. Converting smooth mesh preview to polygons automatically subdivides twice. This smoothing stage is very important because if this is not done, the very faceted feel of the proxy geometry will be echoed onto the final wrapped result. With the cache proxy mesh now subdivided, all that is left to do is wrap to form the final gene geometry onto the proxy mesh. I make sure exclusive bind is checked in the wrap to form options window because it yields faster wrapping and viewport feedback results. And that's it. That is the workflow. Let's move on to a summary of the results. The finished result relies on a few component to component constraints. The entire belt line region of the genes and half of the pelvic region is held in place with a component to component constraint. This is important because this clothing item has a belt that needs to act like a rigid body. So I need things to be held in place up there. The constraining at the top also helps to minimize unwanted deformation in that region. I also had to do the same for the cuff of the pants because the fabric kept on riding up his legs as he walked. So the base of the cuff is now pinned to his feet on either side. A low friction value is also to blame for the pants riding up as the character walks. So I had to increase the friction of just the jeans. I could have also increased friction on the body of the character. Since it's an end cloth passive collider and that option is available for passive colliders. Friction works as expected to produce some resistance when the fabric tries to slide across the surface of the colliding mesh. These initial tests were performed with the default solver settings of three and four for substeps and maximum collision iterations. And from my experience, I know that solver setting quality plays a big role in the look and behavior of the final result. So I reserved any harsh criticism of the work in progress till the end when the solver settings were hiked up to high values. Before I continue, I must mention that end cloth has a heavy denim preset and it works just as well. I just have some unique things I wanted to do here with a topology that required me to head in my own direction. There is a bounce at the belt line that helps to make it feel like the pants are not welded onto the character's body. This is being achieved by reducing the strength of the component to component constraint at the hip and belt line. I went down from the default strength value of 20 to 0 0.5. This makes for a looser grip of the pants on the character's hips. As far as the topology is concerned, I had to remind myself that the point of this technique is to not have too much detail on the proxy mesh. Doing this will unravel the sculpted ZBrush detail during simulation. So I reverted back to my original topology and made some edits. The ruffling at the cuffs needs to be left alone. I don't want the creasing unraveled. So I resurfaced the topology at the cuffs to be very, very low. The results are great, but it won't hurt to get a little bit more topology in that region. This will allow for more larger scale secondary level movement of the ruffles, which will be fine. I just don't want any granular movement that gives the proxy mesh the license to unravel the sculpted geometry as it tries to simulate. The topology at the crotch area also had to be reduced to minimize excessive articulation in the pelvic region. This is particularly important for the fabric type we're dealing with, denim. The topology around 
above and below the knee can stay fairly dense because I want some nice creasing there during simulation. That's the only region I don't mind having dense topology in for this particular asset. Next, I want to talk about four properties that are primarily responsible for minimizing deformation in this test and allowing this fabric to act like jeans. Input mesh attract, deform resistance, and rigidity are working together to ensure that the fabric works on every frame to preserve its original shape. Overdriving these values just a little bit will make these pair of jeans behave like a bouncing ball or a starched up pair of khakis. The fabric will hold its integrity so well that a simple knee bend won't do much to deform it. The leg will just blast right through the fabric, leaving the fabric mostly unaffected. Whilst these three properties minimize deformation, the damp property helps to further minimize granular deformation. Generally, too much dampening will make the fabric feel floaty. But when it comes to heavy denim, the end cloth denim preset actually recommends that you increase damp to get a heavy denim feel. For what I'm working with, a value of 50 seems to do the trick. One important change in my simulation settings from other end cloth videos that I've made is the lowering of stretch, compression, and shear resistance from the high values I used to set them to. Hiking up these resistance values is a bad habit because large resistance values increases simulation time significantly. I'm mostly using these values because I don't want the fabric to stretch and compress like bubble gum, but I completely discounted that using input mesh attract, deform resistance and rigidity, even in small amounts, already prevents it excessive compression and stretching. So for this project, I reduced stretch, compression and shear resistance to more reasonable numbers. I started off with a hundred for each of these properties instead of a thousand that I usually set them to. Towards the end of the simulation, I did have to crank stretch resistance up a bit more to 500 because quick movements in the walk cycle were producing stretching that does not look right with denim. So 500, 100, and 100 were my final values for stretch, compression, and shear resistance. I also want to mention that collision thickness and self-collision width scale were increased from their default values to higher values at the end of these simulation tests. And although these values were increased to resolve penetration issues, self-collide width scale in particular had a significant impact on the granular deformation of the fabric. Having a fairly high value of 4.5 makes the fabric act more thicker than it is and therefore prevents it from folding onto itself. But as stated before, input mesh attract, deform resistance, rigidity, and damp are doing the heavy lifting when it comes to minimizing deformation. The last thing I want to talk about are the properties I keep to make sure that this backflip animation didn't obliterate my simulation. Up above, I mentioned how the component to component constraint at the hips has its strength set to 0.5. For a fast backflip action like this one here, a low constraint value like that will force the pants to peel off the character and slide down his leg in the middle of the flip. So what I've done is set a key on the constraint strength at the fastest parts of the backflip where I'm having a problem. I key strength at 20 for a few frames and return it back to 0.5 once the character has landed. I did a bit of a sloppy job with this by setting the end keys too close to each other so there's a visible pop from a strength of 20, which glues the belt line in place, and 0.5, which allows for a looser hang. So I would just have to modify the curve like so to get the smooth interpolation from the hiked up 20 to the 0.5 value. I'll have this done for the next lesson. Another issue here is that the underlying deformation of the rig at the glutes is also not the best. So there's a little wonkiness there. I did not spend too much time on the corrective deformation of the butt or the glutes. This will obviously not be the case for the final rigged model. I'll be using uh, advanced skeletons uh, sliders or custom skin controls to make sure I have uh, proper deformations all over the rig. But the real key setting that is holding things in place is the solver setting max collision iterations. My final solver settings for these tests were 30 for both sub steps and max collision iterations. Unfortunately, this high value for max collision iterations was not enough to prevent the simulation from breaking. So I keyed 
max collision iterations to 60 at the very fast parts of this backflip. And that is what keeps the character leg from penetrating the jeans and breaking the simulation. All right, so that's it for this lesson. I will see you in the next lesson where I run a similar test for the baggy hoodie. The baggy hoodie result will be simulated on top of this finished ripped jeans result. And so will the cropped hoodie in the lesson after that. See you guys in the next lesson.